Hello everyone and welcome back to Cute Crochet. My name is Sri and in today's video I am going to show you how to make this adorable rainbow caterpillar. These are so simple to make it's perfect for beginners. However, it takes a little bit of time to make. I have always wanted one of these segmented caterpillars but never got one for myself but now that I can crochet I can make one. That's the coolest part about crochet. You can make one for yourself or your loved ones too. So let's get started. I am going to be using 4 ply yarn and with it I am using a 3mm crochet hook which is a couple of sizes smaller than what is recommended for my yarn. I do this so that my stitches are nice and tight. Start by making a magic circle. To do that, wrap your yarn up and over your finger like so forming a cross in the front. Then insert your hook underneath the cross. Take the yarn from the other side and pull through. Then yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook. And that completes your magic circle. Remove it from your finger. We are going to be working into this string. We are first going to make the segments for the body. Chain 1 to start. Then we are going to work 6 single crochets into this magic circle. To make a single crochet, insert your hook into the magic circle and pull up a loop. You will have 2 loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through 2. And that completes 1 single crochet. We are going to make 5 more in the same way. Insert your hook into the magic circle and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two. Four more in the same way. You can cinch the circle a little bit as you go by pulling on this tail. Once you have made the 6 single crochets, pull on this tail to cinch the circle completely and that brings you to the end of round 1. Since we are going to be working in continuous rounds, I am going to mark the last stitch of this and every other round. For that, I am using a paper clip but you can use anything. A real stitch marker or even a yarn in a different color will also work. For round 2, start by directly making one single crochet into that first stitch. Getting into the first stitch is always a little bit tricky but you can get into it. Then make one more single crochet into that same stitch. So essentially we have increased in this stitch. We are again going to make two single crochets into the next stitch and every stitch all the way around. For the last stitch, remove the stitch marker and then place two single crochets into that stitch as well. Again, mark the new last stitch of the round. That brings you to the end of round 2. You should have 12 single crochet stitches. For round 3, we are going to increase in every alternate stitch. So, place one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochets into the second stitch. One single crochet into the third stitch and two single crochets into the fourth stitch. Continue to repeat this all the way around. Here I am at the last stitch, I am placing 2 single crochets into it. 
If it is a increased round and you are not placing two single crochets into the last stitch, you must have done something wrong in your counting and you might have to recheck your work. At the end of round 3, you will have 18 single crochet stitches. Don't forget to mark the last stitch of the round. For round 4, we are going to increase in every third stitch. So, we are going to first place one single crochet into the first two stitches. Then, two single crochets into the third stitch. Again, one single crochet into the next two stitches. And then two single crochets into the next stitch. Continue repeating like this all the way around. Here I am again placing two single crochets into the last stitch. Don't forget to mark the last stitch of the round. At the end of round 4, you will have 24 single crochet stitches. For round 5, we are going to be increasing in every 4th stitch. So, place 1 single crochet into the first 3 stitches. Then, place 2 single crochets into the 4th stitch. Again, place 1 single crochet into the next 3 stitches. And then 2 single crochets into the next stitch. Continue repeating like this all the way around. Here I am at the end of round 5. You should have 30 single crochet stitches. For round 6 place 1 single crochet into the first 4 stitches. Then make 2 single crochets into the 5th stitch. Again make single crochet into the next 4 stitches. Increase into the next stitch and continue repeating like this all the way around. At the end of round 6, you will have 36 single crochet stitches. Round 7 is going to be our last increase round. Place 1 single crochet into the next 5 stitches. Then 2 single crochets into the 6th stitch. Continue to repeat this sequence all the way around. At the end of round 7, you should have 42 single crochet stitches. From round 8, we are no longer going to increase. So we are going to make 1 single crochet in each stitch all the way around to keep our stitch count constant. Here I am at the end of round 8, you should again have 42 single crochet stitches. You'll notice that your work starts to curl up like this. We are going to repeat round 8 7 more times so for rounds 9 to 15, I am going to complete that and meet back up with you. Here I have finished making the 15 rounds. For round 16, we are going to start decreasing. To do that, we are going to do the exact opposite of what we did for increases. So, the opposite of round 7 for round 16. Make one single crochet into the first 5 stitches. Then, 
then into the sixth and seventh stitch we are going to do one decrease to do that start off like you normally would for a single crochet but instead of finishing that stitch insert your hook into the next stitch and pull up a loop once you have three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three and that completes one decrease stitch again make one single crochet into the next five stitches Then make one decrease stitch into the next two stitches and repeat like this all the way around. Here I am at the end of round 16. Similar to the increased rounds, you should always be decreasing in the last two stitches of each decrease round. If you are not doing that, you have done something wrong in your counting and you have to recheck your work. Don't forget to mark the last stitch of the round. At the end of round 16, you will have 36 single crochet stitches. For round 17, we are going to do the opposite of round 6. So, one single crochet into the first 4 stitches. Then, decrease in the 5th and 6th stitch. Then again, one single crochet into the next 4 stitches and then 2 together. Continue repeating like this all the way around. Here I am at the end of round 17. In the end, you should have 30 single crochet stitches. For round 18, one single crochet into the first 3 stitches and then one decrease. Repeat like this all the way around. At the end of round 18, you will have 24 single crochet stitches. For round 19, 1 single crochet into the first 2 stitches and then 1 decrease stitch and continue repeating like this all the way around. At the end of round 19, you will have 18 single crochet stitches. Round 20 is going to be the last decrease round, 1 single crochet and then 2 together. Again 1 single crochet and then 2 together. Continue repeating like this all the way around. At the end of round 20 you will have 12 single crochet stitches remaining. Leave a long enough tail for sewing and snip the yarn. You should probably leave a little bit more than what I have done here. It was a little bit too tight for me but I was running out of my purple yarn. At this point we are going to stuff the body. Keep in mind it takes a lot more stuffing than you might think. You might think that that's enough, but no, keep going. When your stuffing starts bulging out, you have done enough. I made 7 of the segments in total, in all the colors of the rainbow and one off white one for the head. We are next going to start with the legs. The first two rounds of the legs are the exact same as what we did for the body. Start with a magic circle. Chain 1 to start and into this magic circle we are going to place 6 single crochet. Cinch the circle and mark the last stitch of the round. For round 2, place 2 single crochets in each stitch all the way around. For round 3, place 1 single crochet into the first 3 stitches. Then 
then increase into the fourth stitch we are going to repeat this sequence two more times At the end of round 3 you will have 15 single crochet stitches. We are no longer going to be increasing. For round 4 simply place one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. At the end of the round you will again have 15 single crochet stitches. We are going to repeat round 4 two more times. So for rounds 5 and 6. For the last round, round 7, we are going to do the exact opposite of what we did for round 3. Single crochet into the first 3 stitches. And then 2 together. Repeat this two more times. At the end of round 7, you will have 12 single crochet stitches. Leave a long enough tail for sewing and snip the yarn. Again, you should keep it a little bit longer than what I have done here. And now I am going to stuff it. Make another one in the same way. Make two in each color except the one for the head. I did make it but it turned out too small because my yarn was too thin. I ended up not needing it. For the antennae the first two rounds are again the same. For rounds 3 and 4, we are going to keep the stitch count constant by making one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. In the end, you will have 12 single crochet stitches. Now is a good time to stuff the piece. For round 5, we are going to be decreasing in every 2 stitch all the way around. I am keeping one finger on top of the stuffing to keep it out of the way. At the end of round 5, you will have 6 single crochets all the way around. At this point, you can add a little bit more stuffing if you need to. For round 6 through 8, I am going to make 1 single crochet in each stitch all the way around. I am not putting in a stitch marker here because the piece is already too small and if I add a stitch marker, it will get more clunky. Instead, I am keeping count in my head very carefully. This is crucial to make the two antennae of the same size.
In the end, slip stitch into the next stitch and then snip the yarn leaving a long enough tail for sewing. You are going to need to make two of these pieces. For the eyes, I am going to use these black flat back pearls and I am going to stick them on using some fabric glue. I do not recommend this at all if you are making it for a child. If you are doing that, you should always use safety eyes. Put in the safety eyes in the same positions that I am going to tell you but do that after the end of round 15 before stuffing the piece. Count the number of rounds from the top. I am going to place the eyes in between rounds 9 and 10. I am leaving a gap of 7 stitches in between the two eyes. Next, I am going to embroider the mouth. Come in through the back of the head. I am going to place the smile in between these two stitches so come out through any one of them. Don't pull the yarn all the way through the body, keep a little bit hanging in the back. Then go through the other stitch and go down. Go through a stitch that is in between the last two stitches. Then pick up that loop and stitch through it and bring the yarn tail through the back through the same hole that we entered through. Then tie a knot to secure the embroidery in place. Trim the yarn and then push the knot into the stuffing to hide it. Fiddle around with the shape of the smile until you are happy with it. Next, we are going to sew on the antennae. I am placing it on the third round. Once the antenna has been sewn on, bring the yarn through the base of the antenna and through the back of the head. Repeat the same thing for the other antenna making sure that it is symmetric. Once it has been sewn on, bring the yarn tail through the back through the same hole that we did earlier and then tie a knot, trim the excess yarn and then push the knot into the stuffing using the back of the needle. Next, I am going to sew on the legs to the body. First, I am going through the next stitch to level out that last stitch. As you can see, the top of the leg forms an angle like this. We are going to place it on the body like this. Line up the last stitch of the leg in between the 9th and the 10th round of the body. So right here. Then we are going to stitch it in place. Once the leg has been sewn on, bring that yarn tail through the base of the leg to the back of the amigurumi. We are going to sew on the other leg 10 stitches apart. Place it angling it like this and then sew it all the way around and then bring the yarn tail through the same hole. Leave the tails hanging there for now. Sew on the legs individually for all the pieces. Next, we are going to sew the segments together. 
First place the last two segments like this and then sew along the opening. When the pieces have been sewn together, bring that yarn tail to the back through that same hole where we had left the previous yarn tails hanging. Tie a knot using the three tails and then snip the yarn closely and then hide that knot into the body. So on the remaining pieces like this in the order of the rainbow. Make sure the legs are facing in the right direction so that your caterpillar can sit comfortably. At the end of stitching we are going to hide the yarn tail in the same way as before. Now all the segments have been sewn together, it's nice and bendy and poseable. I am now going to sew on the head on this pink segment like this. Once you have finished sewing, tie a knot in the back. Then bring that yarn tail in through the head and then snip the yarn. And the caterpillar is complete. He turned out so cute. I absolutely love him. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.